Hey, 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 welcome to Chris BI. My name's Chris Wagner. I'm here with Dax. And today we're going to be going over how can you use a Power BI data mart to create your own custom data set. Oh, so excited about it. Let's go. Alliance is counting on you. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any future emission. Okay, so where do we start when we're working in Power BI? We start in the Power BI service. When we're in the service, we're gonna wanna go over to uh, the, the, the data mart that we've created. So we go to our workspaces and our Power BI demo data mart. Here's all the stuff that you saw in the previous videos. You know, if you haven't seen them yet, check them out. I've created all my tables. And as you can kind of see down here, I've got my Power BI demo and my Power BI Data Mart demo data set. Hey, you think I'm good to go? Well, maybe, maybe not. Let's go in and let's check it out, okay? So if I click on my Power BI demo data mart, I go in and I can start to see all of the tables that are in my data mart, right? So we've kind of covered that uh, in other videos. You can go in and you can do queries against it, super powerful. But here is the big one and we're gonna be focusing in on today and that's this model button. So if I go into model, I'm gonna see all of the tables that are inside my model by clicking on the all, tab all tables tab right? And then click on show all tables. This is going to show all the tables I have in my model. As you can kind of see here, though, all these tables are in, but what are we missing here? We're missing all of our joins. Well, joins are, are kind of a big deal. I can build out reports right now off of any one of these individually. But let's say I wanted to like use my full on like enterprise model that I had before. Don't worry, we can do all that in a bag of chips, super easy. I, I'm gonna go actually go over to Power BI Desktop and let's show you how we can create and customize that model. To, as you recall, we started this taking a model that already exists and wanted to like bring it together. Let's go take a look at how we do that. I fire up my Power BI Desktop. So I've got this up and running. And in this case though, that whole big model that I had, that is okay, but let's say I want a mini model. You know, I don't necessarily wanna have all the fact tables in. For this model, I want it to just be around internet sales. So I'm going to head over to my data hub. You can see that that's this, that's this third item right up here. I'm gonna click on the drop down button and I'm gonna choose Power BI Data Marts. Currently, this is under preview, uh, but this is the one I'm gonna click on. So I click on data marts, and it's gonna ask me which one do I want to uh, connect to. So I'm gonna choose my Power BI demo data mart. Here's where you need to be careful. We want to make sure that we choose to go to the drop down button and connect to the SQL endpoint. If you just choose connect, you're gonna connect to the Power BI data set that's in the data mart and not, oops, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> You're gonna connect to the Power BI data set that's in the environment and not the underlying tables. We want the underlying tables so we can create this mini model. So we're gonna connect to this SQL endpoint. I'm gonna go in and at the same time as this is loading up, I'm gonna open up that original model that I was building this off of so I can understand what elements I need to have and what elements I don't need. Here is the model that we were basing this off of. And as you can see, if we look at everything, it's it's quite, it's a big model, right? There's a lot of stuff that's in here that we don't necessarily wanna have. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create a new layout and I'm gonna just add in the fact tables that I want to include inside of my uh, model that I really want us to take a look at here. So in this case, we're going with the internet sales. So I'm gonna drag internet sales in and I, I happen to know that I also need to have fact internet sales aggregate inside of here. So I'm gonna drag both of these into, into my model. And on this one, I'm gonna click on add related tables, okay? So this is gonna show me all of the tables that I need to have inside my model to replicate this model using my brand new Power BI data mart, okay? We're gonna kind of collapse all these things Make it so it's easy for me to see. A lot of people like to have, which is having your facts on the bottom and all your dimensions on top. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it on my other screen. And I'm gonna use this to create 
what needs to come over. So I've got my Fact Internet Sales. That's going to be my biggest guy, right? Fact Internet Sales. All of those are, are, I've selected all of those. I'm just going to click on load. And in this case, we want this to be an import. Boom, everything's all set up. And if I go and I look, I've got most of my joins in place, but I, I can kind of compare them. And I, I know I'm going to find that I don't necessarily have everything set up the way, the way I would expect it to, right? Especially my, my date dim. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have both models up on my two screens, and I'm going to make sure that I set them up in the exact same way that I want them to be. Oh, the only thing that I have that's an issue is my date dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this really easy. I'm going to just going to go in and I'm going to set up what are my, what are the joins that we're expecting? And it's the order date key is going to be on both tables is going to be the primary active join. And then I'm going to set up the, the two inactive joins, the due date and the ship date. So now that we have these here, I want to do something else to make this easy because I've got all my measures in my other model that I want to bring over. So I want to go into my editor. So I'm going to go to my home page and I'm going to click on edit or transform data. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to rename all of my tables so that it's easy for me to work with. All right. So it's fact internet sales. I'm just going to take this model off of it. That doesn't help me out at all. I don't need those. All right, so all those are done. Close and apply. One -na 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 -na. Boom. Now, all of my table names have been changed. Um, I, I'm good to go. Now, what I could do is I could start to bring over the measures that I have inside of my model. So I'm gonna start over in my other report, I'm going to go and I'm just going to go through my fact internet sales. All right. So now I've created all my measures. I've also gone through and I've made sure to format them all. Now I also want to take the time to hide the fields that I'm not in use because I don't want to use accidentally use any naked measures inside my report. And that is one of the columns that a measure is created from, uh, not the DAX statement itself. So I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna hide all those in mass. And I'll know that I've done that properly. I've hidden all the measures when my table turns into a, a, a calculation, it looks like a calculator. This is going to be a fact table. Okay. Once this is done, I'm going to go up to file. I'm going to save this as my internet sales in my data sets, publish it up to the service. And in this case, because it's part of my data mart, I'm going to deploy it into my Power BI data mart demo right here is where it's going to deploy. And I'm going to hit select and it's going to publish this out to the service. And then when it gets done, I know I can go out and I can actually start to build reports off this, just like with any other data set or in the Power BI service. I go out to my Power BI service and I go right back into my Data Mart workspace and you'll see, boom, there is, there is the internet sales data set that we created. You know what I should probably do is I should schedule it. So I'm gonna, um, uh, so settings, We'll edit the credentials. We'll put in OAuth2. We'll say there's nothing there. So I'll hit sign in. It'll take me to my sign in stuff. I'll choose my sign in ID. It's gonna confirm that everything's fine. And then I'm gonna schedule a refresh. Now remember, my loads of my data marts happen at, at midnight. Then at one o'clock, uh, the data mart itself refreshes. And because I'm, I'm loading from that data mart, I then want to schedule this for 2 a.m. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to add a new time. So we're going to schedule this for 2 a.m. And then I'm going to click on apply. So that's done. 
And now I'm going to go back. I'm going to scroll down and make sure that I can refresh it. So I'm going to kick off the refresh. Oh, look, cancel refresh. That's new. But I also want to create a report off this. So I'm going to go right into, into the data set through here. And I'll go create report. And I'll start from scratch. So I can go in and I can start to add in internet sales amount. Very easy to do. If I was in my Power BI desktop, I just go connect to a Power BI data set, browse for this model, and then I'm ready to go. All right, Dax, what'd you think? Was that easy enough to create a, a, a data set off of that, a custom data set, instead of just using the one that was in the service? It's a great way to like minimize how many different assets you have inside your model. So this is a mini model compared to the overall model that was out there, you know, with all these different facts, all these different dimensions. This allowed me to make sure that I was, was just had the information that I needed to have inside my model. Uh, you know, and you might want to do this for a number of reasons. Maybe number one is size. Maybe the overall model size is larger than what you could fit into an individual data set. So maybe you have a, a P1, which caps out at 25 gigs of memory. Uh, but you have, you know, 60 gigs of data that you're managing in your Power BI Data Mart. Well, maybe you want to break that up into three or four different data sets so that you can manage those refreshes and all the data for any given uh, you know, star is able to be in one space, even though you can't fit them all in one area. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you did, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share this with your friends, family, loved ones, all that good stuff. You guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.